Yeah, so I walked into the first class uh, that day and I just started teaching. There was a helping teacher, like a teach, what do you call it, like teach helper, help teach, whatever. Um, she was the class's uh, normal teacher, so she was sitting in the back and playing her phone. Uh, sometimes trying to be like shh or like go and like rah, 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 shut up and uh, yeah, it worked sometimes. Um, yeah, so I started to teach and I was teaching, 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 teaching and every day after those seven I was like oh. <laughs> I was really happy that uh, in Chinese schools they usually have a nap between 12 and 2 o'clock so I would go home and I would just like sleep from the second my uh, head just touched the pillow I'd be like <laughs> Yeah, because <laughs> it was so hard, um, but it was also very interesting. The Chinese students, they love me, um, not probably not because of my teaching skills, probably more because they were in boarding school. They didn't see their parents very often, uh, if they were lucky once in a week. And they were only five, six years old. So because we were there every day, they were like, ah! Chinese uh, no ah teacher 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 all the time uh, this is also why I learned Chinese because they were talking to me all the time in Chinese obviously so we were English teachers but nobody really spoke English I was teaching and uh, during the teaching time I would just teach very simple words I was uh, beforehand I was really nervous that my English was not good enough I was uh, pretty you know shy yeah, just very nervous about it. Um, but when I came there, I realized that these students, they knew nothing. They could say one, two, three, A, B, C. And then they would sit like this. <laughs> that was the best move for a teacher. Uh, uh, that is the best move, uh, the best move for a teacher to know, I think. Uh, one, two, three, A, B, C. And then the students won't say anything for like, a minute or so <laughs> then the whole thing starts all over again anyway so i love uh, drawing so i brought a lot of um, um like papers in there and we would draw things i would say a thing they should draw i would say a color they should choose that's also how i learned the chinese colors because again the students like to say it in chinese to me <laughs> and uh, yeah we watched a lot of uh, curious george uh, right now now i know the whole video from the beginning to the end just because we were watching this uh, video a lot and uh, we also listened to a lot of Taylor Swift because the Chinese students they really really loved uh, to watch the video the music video for Taylor Swift's uh, love song I think um, the problem was just that in the end they're kissing like this Mwah! And uh, the Chinese parents like, oh my God, no, she can't show them that. <laughs> so yeah, I had to stop just a second before the last scene and all the students be like, no. <laughs> and I'll be like, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. So four months of that teaching every single day, Sometimes uh, Sarah would come and tell us that we had to get it, go in for the weekend and then they would say, she would say that we could take Monday and Tuesday off. It's like a Chinese thing, so they have uh, one holiday at one time. If it's the weekdays, they would take the weekdays off, but then they would just work seven days in a row afterwards. I never really got that. It's really random. I'm like, why will you take time off then if you just work it up afterwards or beforehand? <laughs> I don't get it. Well, anyway, in the end we had a Christmas show and they said we should practice for a Christmas um, song or something and uh, me and my friend was like, <laughs> we're not that fan of singing on a stage with a microphone in front of a trillion Chinese people uh, and not being drunk. Um, yeah, so, but and then I realized very soon that the Chinese, they tell you a lot of things, but it's not always gonna happen, right? So a week beforehand they said, oh, you should practice a song. We were like, ah! And we started to think about a song and then two days beforehand when we hadn't really practiced at all actually uh, they just said oh yeah you don't have to do that anyway you can just come and just um, like introduce yourself and then that's gonna be it so yeah we survived that Christmas show as well <laughs> very nice <laughs> yeah um, when I was teaching because it was through an agency so if I had any problems I would just uh, send them an email and they would be like yeah we're gonna fix it and it was just super convenient um, also we had living 
earning allowance with like 2000 RMB, it's not very much, but that's because it's through an agency. So I would definitely recommend if you want to teach in China, you should go through an agency first, especially if you don't speak Mandarin and if you don't have a bachelor degree, because you can't get a working visa in China unless you have a bachelor degree. Also, it's just, it's very nice to be safe the first time, you know, and then the second time you can always do it yourself. That's what I did. So I feel like um, this agency was helping me the first time and like, taking me through all the harsh things in China because obviously it's a very different culture from ours uh, from mine sorry sorry guys if you're a Chinese it's totally cool um, but it's just very different and uh, yeah so I just felt really happy that these people were here to help me like 24 hours a day when we had any trouble teaching in China is very interesting it's very hard but it's also very interesting I would call it an adventure I would say you should definitely do that if you're thinking about going to China it's a very good way to get into Chinese culture and usually you don't work as much as me that was just I think that was just a one-time coincidence or like unlucky thing because usually I had many other friends who said oh yeah we're just working a few hours a week and the rest of the time we were like in the office so we could travel around and spend our money so yeah um, my program was called teach and travel so I didn't travel much also because I was just very shy and yeah I know it was just me long time ago <laughs> I've changed a lot since then but definitely this agency just helped me get into Chinese culture and Chinese way of doing things and uh, now I just feel much more comfortable being in China so I'm not in China I feel much more comfortable with China or I don't know what I mean whatever you you yeah whatever I'm just really excited you see how excited I get when I start talking about this because it was a really good experience and yeah if you guys have any questions about this teaching in China please uh, leave comments below I know uh, this was probably a very messy uh, video it's just because I'm just talking about my experience I get so excited and I forget what I should say and then I talk about a trillion other things um, but the next video is gonna be pros and cons about teaching in China so I'm gonna give you guys the very positive parts but i'll also uh shed some light on the negative parts about teaching in china so please uh wait for the next video if you think this one was uh, way too messed up anyway guys give me a thumbs up if you still like it or like my lipstick or like the setting or buy a new t-shirt that i or shirt that i bought uh second hand in the second hand market um in this town i really love second hand markets whatever not important <laughs> so yeah guys have a nice day and thanks for watching and Ling Ling is out